The year 2000 was a critically important year in the course of human history. I was born that year. That wasn't really important at all, but a lot of other really important shit happened that year. One such thing being the Patriots selected Tom Brady in the sixth round of the NFL draft, which was a draft pick the Patriots would not go on to regret as we all know what Tom Brady went on to become after those humble beginnings, right? I know all too well because I'm a Jets fan and all due respect, but uh, I'm sure Tom Brady's beautiful wife Giselle is jealous of the Jets because of how hard her husband has fucked us over all these years, man. Anyways, considering that Tom Brady went on to be the GOAT, you would think that the Patriots front office would be patting themselves on the back for drafting him in the sixth round, right? For their ability to evaluate talent and find this diamond in the rough. But they actually did the opposite. They saw drafting Tom Brady in the sixth round as a failure. They said to themselves like, yo, what were we doing wrong to have waited until the sixth round to draft Tom fucking Brady? And not only did they wait until the sixth round to draft Tom Brady, they didn't even have him as a starter on the team. They had him as a backup. And if Drew Bledsoe had never gotten cracked on this play by, guess who? The New York Jets. Tom Brady might have never played a single snap as a starter in the NFL. So when the Patriots started winning all those Super Bowls with Tom Brady, the Patriots front office didn't see it as evidence that they were good at their jobs, that they were good at evaluating talent. They actually saw it as evidence that they weren't very good at evaluating talent and that they needed to get better. Now, obviously they are being a little bit hard on themselves because everything's clearer in hindsight. And look, all these other teams weren't smart enough to draft Tom Brady before them. So why not like pat yourself on the back for noticing Tom Brady before all these other teams did? Well, the reason why is because like all other great organizations, the Patriots don't measure their success based on whether or not they're doing better than the competition. They have their own set of standards that they have created for themselves that have nothing to do at all with the competition. It's something you could refer to as an inner scoreboard, where the idea is you don't give a fuck what the outer scoreboard says, right? You could be winning by 100 or losing by 100. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters, the only thing you measure your success on is whether or not you are adhering to the extremely high standards you have set for yourself. Which to illustrate, I want to show you guys another football example because football is awesome. It's the fourth quarter of the 2012 NCAA championship. Alabama has been spanking Notre Dame all game and is winning 42 to 14. They're now running out the clock to complete a perfect season. Alabama is led by their star QB, A.J. McCarron. And you could say life is pretty good right now for A.J. He's about to celebrate this victory with his brothers on the team. Then later tonight, he's probably going to bang his hot-ass wife, who ESPN has been broadcasting on national TV all night. So the entire country, even the broadcasters are thirsting over this dude's wife. Now, uh, when you're a quarterback at Alabama, you see that lovely lady there. She does go to Auburn. I want to admit that. But she also, this Alabama, and that's A.J. McCarron's girlfriend, okay? And right there on the right is D.D. Bonner. That's A.J.'s mom. Wow, I'm telling you, quarterbacks, you get all the good-looking <laughs> women. Ah, it's a, what a beautiful woman. Wow. He's, A.J.'s doing Whoa. Some, some things right down in So if you're Georgia. a youngster in Alabama, Start getting the football out and throw it around the backyard with pop. So you could say that AJ's chilling right now. He's probably on cloud nine thinking about how lit this celebration is going to be tonight. There's just no way he could get mad or agitated in this moment. Right? Yes. Second down now. And time out by McCarron. And he's upset with... He's upset with... He's upset with Barry Jones. Wow. Boy, that is highly wow. unusual. I but thought for he pushed might it, be just so you understand, they're, they're, they're upset because they're both making calls, and McCarron's trying to overrule Barrett Jones, and Barrett Jones is saying, <laughs> I, you know, I'm making Before the call. Before the timeout signal, delay a game. So they're, Offense, a five-yard penalty. They both do so much, 
at the line of scrimmage when it comes to making the checks up there. Oh boy, see there he goes. Oh right. now he's he's very upset now. Understandably, you know these the, the terriers you just saw are, are roommates. And, and there's something has really aggravated Saban. To me, there's just something so funny about this clip where you see these people and how mad they are, especially the coach. And then you look down at the scoreboard and think like, yo, what the fuck? What are you guys all so mad about? And could you imagine being a player on the other team and you're just getting destroyed all game? You know, it's the fourth quarter. You've pretty much given up. I mean, you're still trying your best and everything, but you just know you're going to lose, right? You're kind of like dejected, demoralized. And then you look across the field and you see the other team is still playing with this level of intensity. Bruh, I would be petrified. Dude, I would be so scared. I'd be like, yo, coach, sub me out, please, man. These, these motherfuckers are crazy, bro. They're going to kill me out here. Mom, come pick me up. I'm scared. Okay, these motherfuckers are going to kill me. These motherfuckers are crazy. But if you asked a player on Alabama if this was crazy, they'd be like, no, man, that's not crazy at all. What do you mean that's crazy, dude? Because at Alabama, it, it really doesn't matter what the score is, okay? They could be winning by 100. They could be losing which doesn't happen often, but sometimes Alabama loses. It could be a tie game, and it doesn't matter how big the game is either. It could be the national championship. It could be just a regular season game, first game of the season. You know, it could be a practice. Hell, it could even be an off-season walkthrough. The point is, at Alabama, they don't make dumbass mistakes that lead to dumbass penalties like this. They don't give a fuck about the scoreboard. The only thing they care about is whether or not they're living up to the extremely high standard that they have set for themselves. And at Alabama, it is unacceptable to not live up to that standard. And I know it does seem extreme that they're overreacting to this silly little mistake when they're up by like 30 points in the fourth quarter of the national championship. But understand that the reason why this team got to that position in the first place is because they attack everything they do with this attitude. And this attitude of not giving a fuck what the scoreboard says is a common theme among sports dynasties, right? The legendary coach, Bill Walsh, who coached the 49ers back in the 1980s when they made it to six Super Bowls, winning three of them, he's famous for his philosophy of the score will take care of itself, right? Bill Walsh, he had this standard of performance, which was pretty much a 17 principles that he wanted his players to live by. And these principles, they had nothing to do with football at all. Like literally, they had nothing to do at all with football. They were all just about your attitude, right? That was the idea. Just attack everything with the right attitude and the score is going to take care of itself because you can't really control the scoreboard. What you can't control though is your attitude. That's the only thing you can control. So you might as well just focus on that. This philosophy of the inner scoreboard is what separates the great teams from the absolutely legendary dynasties in sports because a team could get lucky one year and win a championship. It happens all the time, you know, that's sports. But then what happens is the team, they let it get to their heads. They start thinking, oh, we're so good, man. We just won a championship. They start slacking off. And then they come into the next season with this inflated ego and they get embarrassed and end up like missing the playoffs. It happens all the time. But those legendary teams that end up winning like multiple championships in a short period of time, they don't rest on their laurels after winning once, right? Like they celebrate. Don't get me wrong, they celebrate and as they should, right? Like if you're winning, you should celebrate. You should be proud of your accomplishments. But if you wanna keep winning, you have to stay humble. You still have to scrutinize yourself just as hard as you would if you had lost in humiliating fashion. That outer scoreboard doesn't mean shit. It's the inner scoreboard you should be worried about of am I living up to the standard of performance I have set for myself. And that's the only thing you have control over because no matter how much you try to manifest certain things happening in your life, the only true power you have to make them happen is the effort you put in. And sometimes it doesn't work. Even if you put in 100% effort, 
sometimes you'll still lose, right? Like that's a part of life. Losing is a part of life. Sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce your way. You get unlucky. Other times you're just up against some competition that's way better than you, which once again, that's part of life. You know, it's okay. It's okay. You know, sometimes other people are going to be way better than you are at certain things. It's okay. All right. The only thing that matters is, are you being the best version of yourself? And that's the beauty of the inner scoreboard right there. Because with the inner scoreboard, you could, you could get, be getting destroyed, bro. You could be losing by 100 points and still go home happy. Truly. As long as you're living up to your own standard of performance, it doesn't matter what the outer scoreboard says. You could still go home with some pride because you went out and you gave it your all. Take, for example, the other weekend, the uh, O'Malley versus Moutinho fight. Moutinho was getting fucked up, bro. It was target practice for O'Malley. He was destroying him. But Moutinho can go home with his head held high because he kept fighting like a dog the whole time. The most savage son of a bitch I've ever met, man. Congratulations. <laughs> this guy right here. Good job, buddy. Congratulations and good job with your money. Got paid, huh? The only thing you should ever worry about are things that are in your control. So only worry about that inner scoreboard, man. Fuck the outer scoreboard. Who gives a fuck? Honestly, who gives a fuck? Some people do. I do from time to time. Then I gotta center myself. Be like, yo, come on, bro. Just, just focus on what you can control, man. Come on, man. And look, as long as you are living up to that standard of excellence that you have set for yourself, you're gonna have no regrets, okay? You could lose, you could take so many L's, you could be a quote unquote failure, but you're not because you know you gave it your all, you'll have no regrets, and that's the best way to live right there with no regrets. Anyways though, guys, thank you all so much for watching the video. Really do appreciate it. I know it's been a minute since I last made a YouTube video. Some of you guys may be wondering, where have I been? Uh, honestly, I've been chilling, man. You know, nothing's wrong. I didn't die. Nothing bad happened. I've just been chilling. Haven't really felt like making YouTube videos, to be honest. That's the reason I haven't made any videos. So I do appreciate y'all for sticking around and watching this video. Really does mean a lot. So, you know, everyone, make sure you like and subscribe. Do all that fun stuff. And uh, take care. Have an amazing day, everybody. Peace.